Miguel, hi. Um, we've got a couple of wines from uh, your Chilean winery here and made from a grape that's not uh, maybe familiar to quite a lot of people. Mm. What can you tell us about Pais? Well, um, Pais is a variety that arrived to Chile already 500 years ago with the first Spanish conquistors. And for 300 years, it was the only grape variety used to make wine, no? uh, be much before than the Cabernet Sauvignon or the Chardonnay arrived. No? And uh, what we have tried to do during these past years is to recuperate this great variety in order to start produ producing wines again with Pais. And where do, where do they reckon it came from in Spain? Well, they say that uh, the most uh, feasible th theory is that it came from the Canary Islands. Uh, there's a variety called Listan Negro that they actually still make wine, red wine in the Canary Islands. And uh, especially the Jesuits like this variety a lot because it was very resistant to all kind of uh, climate conditions and they planted in all the places where they went. They, uh, they went to California, they went to Peru and they also went to Chile and there they call it uh, país, that means country. Yeah? It's a grape of the country. And we've got two rather different wines from them. Uh, what, tell me about the first one, this sparkler. The sparkling wine is called Estelado and uh, it was our first project. It is made with uh, um, país vines that have uh, 150 years old, so very old, old vines. And we decided that uh, we wanted to make a sparkling wine, but on a, um, on a very nice way. So we, we did it with a method traditional. So that means that the second fermentation is inside the bottle. It will be like a champagne or like a cava. And it's a rosé sparkling wine. So it's very nice. Uh, it has a lot of fruit. And I, I think that it's a bit sophisticated too, you know, and, and shows a very, very nice uh, character of the país. Now it's interesting that you're using that for a sparkling wine because the other wine that you've uh, you've made from it is this one Reserva del Pueblo, yeah. and when we tasted that just now, uh, you said some people refer to it as almost like the Pinot Noir. Uh, what, what, how? And thinking about Pinot Noir being used first for still and sparkling wine, what is it about the grape that reminds some people of Pinot Noir? Well, I think that it's a variety that uh, that you can recognize it because uh, it's it's not as a strong or not as heavy as a Cabernet Sauvignon for example so some of the characteristic of this wine is that it has a bit less color uh, it's, uh, uh, it has less alcohol as, as well but it has a very nice nice fruit it, it can be even uh, quite aromatic it can be very gastronomic too it has a little bit of tannin at the end so I think that it's a variety that is very versatile so it can, uh, can work for red wines it can also work for sparkling wines in Chile Thank thanks, you. thanks very much. Thank you, Sam.